Hello, everyone. Matt Clark, Research Analyst for Money and Markets here with the Bull and the Bear podcast. Remember, if you do have any comments or questions or stocks you'd like us to analyze, just email us at the bull and the bear at moneyandmarkets.com. I want to jump right into today's podcast. Today, I want to start out by tossing out two numbers to you. $12 billion and five and a half. Just think of those two numbers. Now, separately, those two numbers are pretty meaningless. Uh, but together, they actually tell a pretty interesting story. And I'm going to get to that. You see, one company in the U.S. sold $12 billion worth of products in just five and a half days. So just think about that. $12 billion in products in five and a half days. It's pretty uncommon to see a company, that, you know, pull those kind of numbers in that short of time. There are a lot of retailers out, out there, actually, that would wish for $12 billion in sales in a year, let alone in just five and a half days. Now, beginning in 2015, this company decided to buck the system and set aside a day to give its best deals to customers. One day, that was it. And they were going to lower prices, they were going to provide specials, they were going to open things up to particular members, uh, and, and it wasn't even Black Friday. As, you know, even back in 2015, Black Friday was still kind of the, the retail staple. It took off so well, they did it again in 2016 and 2017. Then in 2018, the company augmented things a little bit because things were going so well. In fact, sales grew 60% from 2016 to 2017 alone. And so they were increasing the days, so they were offering their deals from one day to 36 hours, a day and a half. Then last year, the company did virtually the unthinkable. They grew its special offer period to two days, and it paid off. If you think about it, and look at the numbers. In 2015, the company had an estimated $415 million in sales on their one day. In 2016, that number grew to around $525 million. They crossed the $1 billion mark in 2017 after they increased that sales time to one and a half days. Then sales exploded in 2018 for a massive $4.2 billion. And then finally last year, the company did an estimated $5.8 billion in sales. And that's when they increased to two days. Now, the company doesn't necessarily make public these sales. These are all based on estimations, but they're fairly consistent. Now, if you haven't guessed it by now, the company that pulled this off is Amazon.com Inc. They trade on the NASDAQ under AMZN. While the sales figures are astounding, it actually kind of got me thinking about something when I was doing research, especially as, as, as Prime Day kicked off on Tuesday and went into Wednesday this week. And that was, how is the success of literally five and a half days translated to the company's share price? So if you look at a chart that I'm going to show here, uh, and I'll also have it elsewhere, Amazon share price has skyrocketed about 700% since that first prime day back in 2015. But if you look a little closer, you can see a trend, or as I observe, kind of a lack of a trend. If you look carefully at the time immediately following each of those prime days, you can see it. Now, if you look close, Amazon stock either moves slightly sideways or actually drops off a bit after Prime Day. Normal expectations would be for that stock to jump even just a little after reporting such strong sales from a one or two day event. But that really didn't happen with Amazon shares. Granted, yes, Amazon stock has blown up and it wasn't necessarily because of their biggest event of the year. Even extending it to two days as they did last year, it didn't make that huge of an impact on the share price at least immediately. And that's the other thing you have to keep in context here. If you look historically, I compared the closing price of Amazon on Prime Day and compared that to the first day of trading just a few months later. Typically, they started in July. Now, this year, they started in October because of the coronavirus and other things, other headwinds that Amazon was facing. So what I did is I took July from the day it started, and then I compared that going out to September. It's a very short time frame. May not necessarily tell a full picture, but I think if you're looking at immediate, in the immediate, it, it does kind of suggest something. Now, from July 2015 to September 2015, Amazon stock rose 15.5%. That I can kind of, uh, you know, take into account because it was the first prime day, sales were great, it was the first thing they had ever tried. And it was days later that actually Walmart followed suit and did something kind of similar. Now, from July 2016 to September 2016, the stock only went up 3%. So that's kind of interesting. In July 2017 to September 2017, here's where it gets interesting, Amazon shares actually fell about 2%. And then from July 2018 to September 2018, the stock went up 12%. And then last year, when they went up to two days, from July 19 to September of 19, stock fell more than 11%. 
It's not a huge sample and five events don't necessarily make a stock, but it would indicate that Prime Day for Amazon isn't necessarily a huge driver in its share price. We can look at it, Chief Investment Strategist Adam O'Dell's six-factor green zone rating system to see that Amazon is still a pretty strong buy. Overall, the stock rates an 84, which means that it, we are pretty strong bullish on the stock, and then only 16% of all of the stocks that we rate are actually higher. Amazon, we can see how Amazon actually outperforming the rest of the market by three times over the next 12 months. It ranks very high in growth. In fact, it scores a 100 in growth. It scores a 98 in momentum, which means it continues a very strong upswing. Its volatility is a 92, which means it's a very stable stock, and its quality is also a 92, which means it's a high quality stock. Its low marks come in size because, well, Amazon is a large company. It's got a market cap of about $1.7 trillion. But it also ranks very low in terms of value. Its price to earnings ratio is extremely high, 132. It trades at 132 times its actual value. And that's a little bit concerning. But the point here is if you're expecting to make, to, to see a big pop in Amazon because of Prime Day, you're likely to be disappointed. While there are few data points, there's also very little evidence to actually suggest that Amazon shares will explode in their price because of its annual event. Are, po are positive returns possible? Well, of course they are. We've seen that at least in two of the last five years, that actually happened. But Amazon's been on a bit of an upswing for quite some time now. So if you're, but if you're buying solely for the benefit that you might see from a strong Prime Day showing, that's probably not the right reason to buy. You buy because the data tells you uh, that it's the right buy, not necessarily because of an event. It's kind of like Apple. Apple had their event yesterday and they announced that they are going to have a new slew of products come out in, uh, for, the, for the holiday shopping season. Does that necessarily mean Apple shares are going to explode? No, it doesn't. And even if there is a pop after Prime Day, I wouldn't expect it to last too long or to be that strong. Because their, price, their, their shares are already overpriced, any kind of market pullback is going to impact Amazon shares. In fact, it's quite possible that the market, a broader market pullback would actually be because of a drop in Amazon share price because they're so large. Now, if anything we can take away from this, uh, from this Prime Day, it's a holiday shopping season is right around the corner. Not necessarily that we find a strong buy in shares. That's really all I have today on Amazon and Prime Day. If you found great deals for the holiday shopping, hey, that's great. Congratulations. You're among millions of others who did as well. I looked, I didn't really find anything that I really wanted. I uh, found a lot of things I'd like to have, but not anything I really needed. Still, very strong. I expect sales to be very strong this year for Prime Day, especially given all the headwinds in terms of retail during the coronavirus. Now, make sure you check out our YouTube channel. Just head over to youtube.com and uh, make sure you search Money and Markets. We'll have the green logo there that has the bull and the bear, ironically. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. And then you'll get a little bell that allows you to get notified. Make sure you click that and you can get notified every time we release a new video. If you want to listen to the Bull and the Bear podcast, you can do that on your favorite podcast indicators like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and now Amazon. Make sure you subscribe to whatever your favorite podcast channel is and uh, get alerted every time we release a new podcast. Uh, also, feel free to leave us a comment or review on any of those platforms. We'd love to see the feedback. Uh, you can also leave us a, a comment or, or question or things like that by hitting the comments down below on YouTube. Also, uh, if you do have a question on a particular stock or sector you'd like us to take a look at, make sure you email us at thebullandthebear at moneyandmarkets.com. We'd love to see your feedback in any way you want to give it to us. Coming up on Friday uh, the, for the weekend edition, Money Markets Chief Investment Strategist Adam O'Dell will join me and uh, as well as a possible uh, uh, sighting of Money Markets contributor Charles Sizemore. We'll dive into a couple of stocks, let you know whether they're ones you should buy or ones you should stay away from. So make sure you stay tuned uh, for that as well. But until then, I'm Matt Clark, Money Markets Research Analyst. And uh, until we talk next time, safe trading, everybody.